Hi everybody, it's me again, um, Phil Beckwith, the professional decorator. Uh, I just thought I'd like to show you a room that I'm actually doing for spraying the ceiling with the airless, the Greco um, GXFF. Um, to be honest, it's probably quite a simple uh, room to do for somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, but when it comes to actually taping up, that's one of the things that people are a little bit unsure about, particularly spraying in a domestic environment. We do, most of our work is domestic environment, so we don't touch really on the contract stuff and high, um, big contract um, industrial work. It's all private and I must say we do high-end private work. Um, it's not just whopping out of um, council houses. Not that there's anything wrong with whopping out council houses, um, but it's nice to do work that people appreciate the work that you're doing. Not all the time, but appreciate the work that you're doing. Uh, using top end paints, um, we obviously use high end paints and um, actually the finish is pretty good. Right, I'll just show you because I'm rabbiting on, I want to get uh, through this quite quickly for you so you're not too bored. This is a room, it's a big kitchen open plan and what I've done yesterday is um, tape up all the lights um, and get everything ready for the spray and I'll just show you what I've done. So I'll swivel you around and I'll show you the ceiling. You can see down lighters have been popped out because these are down lighters that have been newly fitted. Electrician's done as usual, cut holes filled. Thankfully he's filled them quite well. We've got the Merca um, Laros sander, which you can hear upstairs. My boss is just sanding down um, ceiling and walls and doing a bit of woodwork sanding as well. But these, I'll try and zoom in for you. Can I zoom in? Yeah. Yeah, you can see where the holes were cut and then he skimmed and filled. He's actually not done a bad job, they seem pretty smooth. But this ceiling wasn't brilliant. If I say the word orange peel, um, you'll know what I mean. It's very textured, just through the thickness of the paint that's gone on before. We've gone over it with the Mercury, well, dustless sanding machine. We've improved it the best we can. I've gone round then yesterday, just taping up all the light fittings um, covering anything that I think needs covering. I've got a little bit more sheeting up to do but I'll do that after I've done this video for you. Main thing is tape up as much as you can because it makes it easier. Yes when you're using emulsion paints particularly the anti-reflex from Ticarilla it does soften up if you get it on any surfaces just get some warm water on a sponge wipe over it a couple of times and it, um, it comes off but you don't want to be adding hours um, to your day to be um, cleaning up after yourself so if you can do the taping up and spend half an hour an hour maybe a morning if you've got a lot of taping up to do if you can do that um, to start with it makes it a lot easier when it comes to spraying um, later on and clearing up but as you can see I've taped up the lights I've gone around the stainless steel um, hood we've got the dust sheets going over the worktops as I'm just explaining the floor that will be sanded next week so I'm not too worried about any fine overspray fallout from the ceiling. Um, we've done it, done quite a few other rooms, we've not got a lot of overspray fallout. It's just getting getting your set up right. See this room was done last week, ceiling. I've brushed and cut in the walls. The woodwork I've done with the airless as well. There's a bit of tanning on there which showed through once the water based paint had gone on. It's not a problem because I've still got the woodwork to do in here. So what I've done in here, I've just gone over it, lightly sanded it. I've gone over it with the Zinza bin and that's the red bin. Uh, people get confused with bin, calling stuff red bin, yellow bin, <laughs> blue bin. There's actually three different products. It's Zinza cover stain, which is the oil based. Zinza bin, which this is what I've used on here. Since I've been his spirit base, which is the one that smells of shellac, because obviously it stops knots, and that's the thing that stops knots coming through shellac based products. And then there's the bin 123, um, that's a water based. They also do a bin 123 plus, which is like a next step up from that. But that's something we can talk about if you want to in another video. Um, but yeah, so what I've done, I've just put some bin, the red bin, since I've been over that, stop the tanning coming through because that stops tanning as well. And when I come to do the woodwork in here, I'll just re-go over that. It was just a frame that I did because I was doing the frame in there and I wanted to see what it was like. So yes, we come to the woodwork, that's all rubbed down. Once I've done the ceiling, 
You can see it going across there. Once I've done the ceiling, I'll get cleaned up and I'll go round the skirting boards, taping up um, onto the floor, like I've done there. Just put a, what is it, 12 inch tape um, roll of paper going around the edges. That'll just protect it enough for not getting too much over spray where your initial spraying is. And we go all the way around. So, yeah, it's a big, big room to the ordinary person in an ordinary house, um, but it's not a big room to some big houses. What's interesting to see is, particularly with this light, I'm going to flip you around again for me. What's interesting to see with the light of this, and if we can get the camera right, if you look at the window over my shoulder and I shine, yeah, you might just see it. If you look back at the window, you can look across the top of the ceiling. Oh, get my hands right. Look across the top of the ceiling there, and you can see flashing. You can see roller marks where the um, previous paint's been applied by obviously a roller. It's been a cheap contract emulsion. That's obviously dried very quickly on top of the bare plaster, and they can't keep it going. Hopefully, and I've got my fingers crossed, with me doing the ceiling with spray, I can work quite quickly, I can get quite a bit of paint on in one go and we can, um, we'll call it the cross hatch where you go left to right, up and down, so we're overlapping it by the 50% but going back on ourselves um, to get the two coats in one. The volume of paint is there, um, so it's not like we're skimping on paint, we're getting the volume of paint on but we're going to get a nice wet coat all the way across this ceiling, try and keep it going because the key word is the wet edge want to keep a wet edge going so we don't want to be making it um, go off too quickly by stopping. We want to keep moving all the way along. Now, I could do a video on that, but I think you'll find it boring. And as I've said in previous videos, my videoing skills aren't very good at the minute for actually knowing how to edit these to put them together from two videos into one. So hopefully you can understand what I'm explaining. If you've got any comments, obviously put them in the, the box below always like people to give me a thumbs up and a like and again press that bell to subscribe because the more people can watch my um, new YouTube channel the better and I just hope that I can help at least one person out of anybody who watches any of the videos that I do but again if I miss anything that you think I should be commenting on because there's quite a lot of information to get out to somebody who's new or even somebody who's experienced with the spraying if you think I've just missed anything please just um, comment in the box below and remind me because something that I do as part of the course um, might be something that somebody's missing on that they want, the, want to know the information. Um, it's, it's, quite, it's quite easy, it's quite easy to do the spraying once you know what you're doing. The, um, the concerns are is obviously set up of the gun to make it right for you. And as I said earlier in this video, we, do, we are 99% domestic uh, work. We are working in houses that are occupied, this carpet down and um, the customers about. Thankfully the customers are not about on this job. We're still in Covid, we're still in lockdown. The customers still got their house elsewhere that they're staying at and we've got a clear run on this. So this is brilliant for us to be working while um, there's a pandemic and a lockdown. I appreciate a lot of people can't um, do work at the moment so we're very grateful for that. But what I'll just show you now is what I'm going to be spraying with and that'll be another video um, that will follow on from this. So thanks for listening. Um, thanks for me rabbiting on uh, and you listening to that. Yeah, it's brilliant, but this is what I'm going to be. Oh, wait. It's been around. This is what I'll be using again. It's just the, well, do we call it entry level uh, airless sprayer from Graco? Um, it's fine. I, I really like it for in the domestic. We can just use a small amount of paint. Yeah, I might have to be topping up a few times. Not a big deal, is it? Let's face it, in the bigger scheme of things, it's not a big deal. I've got a new toolbox to keep me stuffing for this week. I was a bit sick last week. I couldn't get everything out, but here we are. I've got me set up again. It's got the gun with the white filter in. I've got a little extension bar just to give me that extra height because obviously when I'm spraying, I want to have that um, 12 inch, three, um, 300 millimeter stroke and 30 centimeter distance between the surface I'm spraying and the actual end of the gun. Uh, I've got the clean shot on and I'm, I'm spraying um, a gold 516 tip. Um, I, I explained in a previous video, I like spraying with that tip. 
Do I need to spray with a gold tip? No, of course I don't. Could I be spraying with an ordinary contract tip? Of course I could. But that's a nice finish for me. I know that by the time I've, let's zoom in on that. By the time that I've um, thinned the anti-reflex down enough, I know how much paint um, to water content that I need for spraying with the um, 516. I know that I get a nice wet coat on the spray finish. A little bit of an overspray bounce back, maybe, maybe not, but not as much as what you could be getting if you were putting it on neat and um, blasting it with too much power. Again, this comes down to the tweaking of your machine, getting used to your um, gun with your filter and your um, clean shot on the end. Um, again, getting the pressure right. I mean, I keep, I keep saying, don't get too hung up on low pressures. If you can get a low pressure out of it, brilliant. You'll learn with experience to tweak your gun and your machine and the paint consistency and getting the filters right um, to get low pressure. That'll come with time. Don't um, try and expect to be being the master uh, of your spray gun straight away. Um, I've been doing this for quite a while. I've obviously back in the college days, back in the early 90s, we touched on spraying. Yes, back at college you learn about spraying. Doesn't mean you're a master of the sprayer. It's time comes um, over the period of time. It comes that you learn more um, as you're using it and um, doing it. And obviously listen to other people. Don't be frightened to ask questions. Um, never be the one that um, sits at the back of the room and um, sits on the hands. Always put your hand up, ask the questions. If you don't know, ask. Always learn off people who do know. That's how we all um, improve. The saying, every day is a school day. Yes, it is. Even me, I learn things all the time. Um, well, I say I learn things all the time. I like to think that I know it and I've probably already forgotten it. Um, but yeah, things do come back to you and you do remember um, what you should be doing when you've not been doing it for a while. Um, but yeah, that's, that's for another day. But I say for now, let's flip you over, come back to me, and we'll say thank you very much. On the next video, I'm going to be um, explaining about the spraying of this um, unit, and I'll also talk about the, um, I'll show you here, the mask, the mask that I'm going to be using. I've got some new filters, and I'll do that as a separate video. So cheerio, thumbs up, comments, press the bell. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.